praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Ann Fleming from Discipling Ministries. Amen. My pastor is Apostle Chauncey Craig. Amen. And we just bless the Lord today. Amen. For you being on the line. Amen. And we're going to go into our midday manner. And I'm going with a scripture, amen, that everyone is familiar with, which is the 23rd Psalm. Amen. And the word reads, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. And we know that Jesus is that good shepherd. Amen. And we shall not like anything. The word tells us, amen, that God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory. So we don't have a need to fret or to worry. Even though we do it, sometimes there's not a need to be be fretful, amen, and not to trust God because he is our shepherd, amen, and the shepherd does not leave the sheep alone, amen, the, the, the shepherd cares for the sheep, and we have, amen, the good shepherd, amen, and he takes care of us, amen, and so we don't have to have have to want for anything. We don't like anything. We may not have everything that we would like to have, but can anybody say on the line today that they are standing in the very need of anything? Amen. God is a good God. Amen. And David said, he's, he's my shepherd. I shall not like. I don't have to want for anything. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I can just say, you know, I would like to have this, and before I know it, I have it. Amen. And you have to think about um, when you're working, some of us have really good incomes and some of us not so good, but I tell you what, God takes care of us. He is our good shepherd. Amen. He leads and he guides us. We're not alone. Amen. We don't like for anything. Amen. Because we belong to him. Amen. Verse 2 says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Amen. God is not having us lie down in no stubble hay and something. You know when you, when you um lie down on something that's... Um, that's going to prick you, that's uncomfortable. But he's making us to lie down and to feast on fresh grass, tender grass. Amen. God is, our lives are, are comfortable. But for our lives to be comfortable, we got to trust God. If we don't trust God for our lives, we think everything is wrong about it. Amen. But we thank God that God makes us to lie down in green pasture, he lead us beside still waters. Amen. How can you rest beside rushing waters? But he leads us beside still waters where we can rest and we can feast. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. So we forever give him praise for being our shepherd. No one above him, no one greater than God is. He restores our souls. Amen. Do you know of anybody, amen, that loves you more than God? He is the lover of our souls, amen. We heard Sister Darlette praying for us today, amen, and she was saying she she didn't want to be repetitive, but every time she think on Jesus, amen, and how good he is, amen, it is God that restores our soul. He's the lover of our soul. Men love our flesh. Amen. And women love men flesh. Men love women flesh. Amen. They love their figure. They love the way they look. Amen. And they and when you start to lose all of that, we don't even know if they love us anymore. But Jesus loves us in spite of dentures. He loves us in spite of my swollen feet. Amen. He loves us past us gaining weight. Amen. He loves us. Regardless, he loves us unconditionally, amen, because if he loved us or his love was de- dependent on 
our being good and faithful, amen, we, we, he wouldn't love us at all. He wouldn't love us at all, but he loves us in spite of who we are. And when our soul is, is thirsty and our soul longs and, 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 and is hunger, God restores our soul. No one can do anything for your soul except for the Lord Jesus. Amen. He restores our life. Amen. It looks like sometimes you just go faint out. It just seems sometimes it looks like we're just not going to make it. But God steps right in and he restores us. He replenishes us. And we say, uh, we use the phrase, boy, I got a second breath. I got a second wind. That's what God does when he restores our soul. We get back into the fight again where we felt faint. Now I feel strength and I feel like I can go now. Amen. But that's what God does. And look what the word says. It says he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not because I've been good, but because of his name's sake. Amen. Not for me. I didn't earn it. But it's God that brings us into right standing with him. Amen. Into a right relationship with him. Sometimes husbands and wives, yes, they're in a relationship, but if either one of those, that wife or that husband, steps out and they're unfaithful, they're not in a right relationship. If my husband goes out on me, he's not in a right relationship with me. If I if I go out on my husband, I'm not in a right relationship with him. So sometimes, amen, we go in and out of that right relationship with God, amen. Sometimes we dance around with the devil, amen. That's not a right relationship. The right relationship is, God, I love you. God, I don't understand why I'm going through this. God, I don't understand why I have these health issues. But, God, I still love you. God, I still trust you. God, you're still my shepherd, and I still shall not lie. Amen? That's a right relationship with God. I'm in right standing with him. Amen? So we want to check ourselves. We want to check ourselves in our relationship with God. We want to check ourselves in our conduct. Amen. With each other. Amen. We were talking this morning. Amen. Me and a friend. You know, we can do all we can do and we can think we're doing these things and we're doing this for God. Amen. And when we when we stand before God, we don't want to hear God say, depart from me. I don't know you. You work up of iniquity. I don't know you. Amen. So what we want to do, because the only thing that's going to last is the fact that I love God with all my heart, mind, soul, my strength. I love you like Jesus loved me. Amen. That's the only thing that's that, that gonna going to stand with God. When he comes back for us, he's coming back for us looking like Jesus. He's coming back for us smelling like Jesus. Amen? We don't mm-hmm. want to be lifting our hands in the sanctuary, talking about we're glorifying God, and God is saying, oh, put them down. Amen? We want to offer up a sweet-smelling savor unto God. Amen? We want our lives to be a very sacrifice unto him. Amen? He gave his life for us. Amen? No one greater than our Father. No one greater than he is. Amen? And so um, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah, my marriage may look like the shadow of death. Amen. My health may look like um, it's a shadow of death. But I tell you what, I will not fear. My children are acting up. It may look like it's, 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 it's dark and dreary, dreary, and it looks like I'm living in doomsville. But I will not be discouraged. I will fear no evil. Amen. When we, when we, when we think of the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say, amen, it says, um, 
me see, because I always get it mixed up, and sometimes when I say it, I go to the 23rd Psalm. But it, it, it talks about um, keeping us from evil. God will keep us from evil, and he'll keep evil people from around us. We don't have to have to pave our own way. We don't have to defend ourselves. He is our defense. Amen? I will fear no evil. I will not fear what man can do. Because we were studying in the other, other, other day, God is for us. And when God is for us, who can be against us? He's greater than the whole world against us. Who can be against you? God is great. Amen? For you Amen. are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's God that protects us, that leads and guides us and comforts us. No matter what we're going through, you could have lost a loved one. But I tell you, God will walk in and comfort you. It is just the world that makes you feel that if you're not not crying and you're not heavily weighed down, that you don't care about the person that died. No, my trust is in God. Amen. And if that person has left here and they left here in Christ, amen, there is a time to rejoice. Will we miss them? Yes. Amen. But through it all, God will comfort you. He will bring you comfort. You don't have to go sit down and go down in the valley and sit down there moaning and groaning because when you get way down in there, you know what? You got to come out. So why go so deep in when you know you're going to have to come out? God will bring you out. Amen. But that's not where we want to be. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. And so no matter what's going on in our lives, we have our communication with our Father. We have our communication. We can pray. We have someone that, that, that's looking out for us, that, that got our best interests at heart, even though we think we know our way, we think we know what we're doing, we think we know where we're going, we think we got it all stacked up, then it's going to happen just like I got it. Can I tell you, it may not happen the way that you got it. The Bible says that God has a future for us and an end, a hope for us. Amen? Amen. And so look to God. Take your, all your cares to God, all your burdens. The Bible says cast your care upon him because he cares for you. We don't have to carry this stuff. We, we, we overload ourselves and we can barely move. Amen? But to walk this journey, to, to go this journey in Christ, we need to be strengthened. You can't do this buckle down. You need to be strengthened. And so the word comes to, to strengthen us and to remind us that we have someone that's guiding our lives. We have someone that's protecting us from evil. Because the devil come to take us out. You may spend some of your days giving him whatever, but he come to take you out. He does not love you. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a thief. Amen. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Give us life and then give us, give us, give, make sure we got more than enough. Amen? It doesn't get any greater than Jesus. Amen? Your husband can't love you like Jesus, even though he, he, he told you he loved you last night. He held you like he, he ain't never loved nobody but you. He can't love you like Jesus. Your wife cannot love you like Jesus. Amen? A mom's love is a great love, I tell you. But she cannot love you. She cannot do for you what Jesus can. There's, there's an everlasting love that's with him. When I think about my own self and how good he's been to me, how far he's brought me from, I'm like, darling, I can't help but give him praise. I can't help but keep telling him I love him. Lord, I thank you. Before we ask for anything else, do we say, Lord, I thank you for what you've already done? 
Before I ask you, God, to take me down this 